it's John here and in this video I'm going to be talking about my process for updating articles. Now I'm going to be talking about the actual process I use to decide which articles to update and I'm also going to be talking about the process I use when I'm actually updating the articles to give them the best chance of ranking on Google. So in this video I'm going to be talking about updating old content. Now for me I think the return on investment is much higher when I pay to have articles updated than I do to have brand new articles published on my site, research written. So in this video, I'm gonna be talking about the process I use to decide which articles are actually worth updating and how I go about deciding which articles it is. I'm also gonna be talking about the process I use to update the articles and the different steps I go through to make sure I give them the best chance of ranking higher in Google once it's gone through my updating process. Now for me on my main site, I've got nearly a thousand articles. So updating that amount of articles is extremely difficult. So I don't just rush in there and start updating whatever articles come up first. I do have a specific process that I use to ensure that I get the best rate on investment. It means that I need to target articles that I'm pretty sure I can get onto the first page of Google and towards the top of Google to get a decent rate and return on the actual spending on having articles updated. For me, when I wrote all the content, which can be 12 months old, two years old, even three years old, a lot of time has passed since then. And your skills in terms of on-page SEO, your writing skills in general, your research skills, these are all skills that you've developed over the last 12 months, two years, that you can now implement onto your older articles and they really do have a better chance of uh, ranking just by adding that additional knowledge that, that you've learned. Now, if you have articles that are ranking on the bottom of page one or even on page two, now you know already that, that Google does like that content and that it is ranking it. And quite often, it, all it needs is that bit of improvement to really push the rankings. And in, in a lot of cases, once I've done an update on an article, I actually see it go from mid page two or the bottom of page one, sometimes to within the top three, or at least from page two to positions like four and five. And that can be the difference between getting like next to no traffic on an article and actually getting a significant number of visitors to a particular articles or posts. Now I've got that bit out of the way, let's get into my process that I actually use to decide which articles I'm going to update and also the process I use when I'm updating articles. Now, as I just mentioned, the key to this is finding articles that are ranking at the bottom of page one or on page two. So the first thing we actually need to do is to find out which articles are ranking at the bottom of page one and on page two. So I'm gonna go over a few different ways that I go through to find out which articles are actually ranking in those positions. Now the first thing I do is I dig into Webmaster Tools. Now if you've not got Webmaster Tools, I seriously consider signing up and getting your site registered with there. You can see lots of analytics within Webmaster Tools. And it can really help you improve your site. Anyway, so if you log into Webmaster Tools and then you go to Performance and then it'll show you the traffic you've had over, I think it defaults to the last 28 days, but you can change that to the last two months last three months, etc. Now, what I do is I go on to the performance report, I'll then click on either queries or pages, then once you've done that, you can then select to show impressions, clicks, and the position in Google. Now, what I'm looking for is, I'm looking for articles that are perhaps getting a lot of impressions and a lot of clicks, or a lot of impressions is, is, is the main one I'm really looking at here. But then I'm also looking at the position so then I can filter by position and then I can look at all the pages on the site or the search queries as well. You can do it by search query that are ranking between like the bottom of page one and page two. So for example, this in Webmaster Tools would show something like between positions seven and 20. Now, if I can find pages that are ranking between positions seven and 20 that are getting a lot of impressions, but not a lot of clicks, then I know that people are searching it, they are showing on the results, but because my rankings are quite low in Google, I'm not getting those clicks. So if I improve those articles and those pages that it's displaying on Webmaster Tools, then I know that I'm gonna get a lot more traffic to those articles. Now, another thing you can also do in Webmaster Tools, if you go to Performance Reports again, and then you view by pages, then what you can actually do is, you can view, say, the last 28 days or the last two months, and then you can click and actually compare traffic from the last 28 days or the last two months between the same period in the previous year. Now, if you do this, it will show you a comparison 
between that year and the previous year and then of course you can look and say how many clicks was I getting last year and how many clicks am I getting this year and if you see particular pages where you were getting a lot more traffic last year than you are this year then you can actually go to Google search for that page then you can see where you rank you can then look at the top three results and which page is actually ranking and then you can see what are those pages including that you're not including in yours so it might be certain topics written within an article they might include videos where you've not included videos they might have tables it just might be a general better article it might be a much longer article so that's another way in which I normally filter by page view and just see like what the difference is between the clicks between the previous years and that gives me a good indication of what the article can do if it's ranking a lot better in SERPs. Now a software that I actually recommend that I also use is I use SEMrush. Now the reason I use this software SEMrush is it does a lot of keyword research but something else I do is I use it to track my rankings. So what I do is I usually track the main keyword that I'm trying to target on most of my articles and then I can have a look which, which pages are actually ranking say between 7 and 20 and then if I can see articles that are ranking between 7 and 20, then I know that if I improve those articles and then I, if I, I can drive the rankings up between positions 1, 2 and 3, then I know that I'm likely to get substantially more traffic from increasing those pages in the SERPs. So again, that's another software I use. I use SMRush and I can track the ranking positions with that and then decide which articles are, are worth improving that standard chance where if I can just move them three or four positions, it can make a big difference in the traffic to those individual pages. Now, uh, another tip is to use Google Analytics and maybe look at the pages that are getting the most traffic. Now, this may seem a bit odd to try and target pages that are already getting a lot of traffic, but quite often, if you go to those pages that are getting the most traffic and they're only ranking in positions three and four, for example, you might be able to get them pages that are already getting a lot of traffic, improve them slightly, then you can take them to positions one and two, and you can see even more traffic on them high traffic pages. So that's another tip using uh, Google Analytics. So I've got one more that, that I nearly forgot. When I'm in Webmaster Tools, and I'm actually looking by search query of what's getting traffic, quite often when I start looking at the keywords that I'm actually ranking for, sometimes they're not even mentioned within the article, but the article is ranking for that keyword. So quite often I'll make a list of these keywords that, that I come across when I'm looking through Webmaster Tools under the queries and I make a note in a Google spreadsheet usually, that's what I use. Then later on in the article I'll try, if, if they fit in, I'll try and include them within the article, them keywords. Or if it's, if it's part of a topic that I've not talked about in the article, then later on I can then add it into the article and include a bit on that topic. So it's like it'd be like a subtopic and then that way I may be able to rank a lot better for those individual keywords that I weren't particularly targeting but I'm actually ranking for, I'm just not ranking well for them. So by including them in my content and writing a little bit around those specific keywords, then quite often you can also look for a lot more keywords. So I've just gone through the process of what I do to decide which articles actually should be updated and narrowing it down so that we stand the best chance of once we've updated them articles, actually getting a lot more traffic to those articles. Because like I said earlier, there's no point in updating an article for it to either not really make a difference because it weren't ranking well in the first place or updating articles that probably didn't really need updating. So like I said, we've just gone through the process of how I actually update the article. So now I'm gonna talk about what I actually do to update the articles. So the first thing I do is I check the spelling and the punctuation. Now I'm not the best when it comes to spelling or punctuation. So what I actually use is Grammarly. Now I use the premium version. It is better than the free version, but these are free version. I then use the Chrome extension, which I use with Google Chrome. And what that does, it allows me to go on the back end of WordPress onto the article and I can scroll down it and I can click on each paragraph and it will check that paragraph for any punctuation or spelling mistakes and it'll give me examples of what I should do to correct it or make it better. Now, I use this throughout the whole article and now this has greatly helped me improve my writing and my articles and I do recommend Grammarly. I will put a link in the description. It, there's a free version, but I do use the premium version. If you do use it, you do go for the premium version like I do. It is an affiliate link, so uh, thank you very much if you do use it. So what I usually do next is, I usually rewrite the introduction. Now the reason I do this is, 
it gives me an opportunity to try and get the featured snippet and it also quite often the introduction from older articles is usually not that good especially on my articles and I think you'll find that it probably is on your articles too. The other thing is I think that when you refresh an article, Google looks at it and it's the first thing it sees. So it can see straight away that there's been some changes made to the article. Now, quite often I look at search intent. So what was the person searching to actually find your article on Google? And, and did you give them the answer straight away to that question or query that they might have been typing in Google? Now, this is what I try and include in my introduction. And like I said, it's a good way of trying to win the feature snippet as well, especially for informational type articles. Now, I will just mention here, the feature snippet is actually part of what I do when I do my on-page SEO, which is search engine optimization. Now, I did recently do a video on this. I will put it in a card if I can, if, uh, and I'll put it in the description too. Now, it's well worth watching that video if you've not already seen it on on-page SEO, because it goes through my whole process of what I check before posting a new article. But I also use the exact same process when updating content as well. Now the next thing to check is, usually when I've wrote an article, I try to target a few keywords or a primary keyword. Now I try and make sure that I've made use of the H1, H2, H3 tags, even H4 tags, and try to include some of these keywords within those H1 and H2 tags because this tells Google that this is what this article is about and it gives a better understanding. And also, it's all about helping the reader so, so the reader can quickly scan through and it can see what the article is about. But I have noticed by including these primary keywords and the secondary keywords within the H1, H2s, H3 tags, things like that, then do usually get a lot better ranking signal. And I just think overall, it does improve how you rank in Google. Now, the next one, which I think is good, is you can add an FAQ section. Now, I do this quite often, and it's it's quite good. If you've got an article where you think there's not really much much I can do, then what I usually do is I add an FAQ section, and if there's related searches or related questions towards the main topic of the article, then I tend to include them towards the bottom of the article. Now, this is also good because quite often, you can actually rank for those those questions as well and it adds more depth to an article so if you want to find questions to do with the faqs then what you can do or what i tend to do quite often is i go on google i'll search what my topic is uh, i might use the word labrador and then say another keyword that's to do with more to do with the article then i might put a how to and things like that and then usually you'll get on google you'll get a bit of a snippet underneath but i'll have quite a few questions and also towards the bottom of the Google search results, you've often got some search queries there that the Google's recommending. And it's a good idea to look at these because quite often the questions, but also these are questions that I think Google are actually, that people, sorry, are actually searching for. And that's why Google is recommending these questions because they're related to what you actually searched in the search bar. So usually I'll put the topic in and I'll put how to, something like that, something that's a question related query. And then it will bring up related queries and sometimes when you search in Google by itself it brings a drop down menu with a load of search queries that it thinks you're trying to search for and like I said these are unusually good search queries that you can use to create an FAQ section at the bottom of an article now another piece of software I do use and I use it to to do with the FAQs and to find questions to add to the FAQs is SEMrush now I use this for keyword research tracking competitor research I use it for all sorts but something it does have that, that I do use is as topic research. And if you go on topic research within SEMrush, I'll put a screenshot up. And what you can actually do is you put in your seed keyword and then it gives you a load of ideas of, of, di of different keywords that are related to that. And then you can actually filter by questions and by queries. Now by doing this, it gives you a load of questions related to the topic that you put in there that you can then use within your FAQs and use them as the questions. Now, another thing I do is I go onto Google and I search for my keyword or topic for the article that I'm trying to improve and rank for. And I look at the top three search results and look at the sites that are ranking in the top three. Now, what I'm looking for is topics or maybe information that they've included or a specific topic they've included in the article that they've talked about that I've not included in my article. And if I see it and I think it's relevant, I might choose to add something about that in my article too, because Google might see that as relevant. Now I especially do this if I see this particular, particular topic mentioned within a couple of the articles ranking in the top of Google. When I'm looking through the other articles as well, something else I often look at is if they've used videos, how many images they've used, 
uh, how they've even structured their article. I'm looking at them, them and I'm thinking, what are they doing that I'm not doing on my, on my page or on my post? Now, a tip here is if it's a product review post or a roundup post, what I usually do is I check if it's in stock. It might be an old model. And sometimes what I'll do is I'll remove a couple of older products or maybe just one product and I might add another new product in, a newer, a newer model, something like that, or a couple of new products. Then that means I've actually updated the article with quite a lot of content usually because it means I've included a whole new review within a content post and I've usually removed one of the old reviews out in terms of structure and the information on the page, it's obviously fresh content. So uh, that's another little tip there that I often use if it's a review type post. Now I talked about this slightly on my on-page SEO video, which I did link to below. And I also talked about it at the start of the video. Now what I'm talking about here is featured snippets. Now featured snippets have a massive opportunity to increase traffic to your site. And on my sites, I've had quite a lot of success with them. So. What I actually do is, I will search for the keyword that I'm trying to target. If a feature snippet comes up, I will look at that feature snippet, I'll look at the site it's come from, and I'll see how has it grabbed that feature snippet, what information is it grabbed. So I'll go onto the page, it might have grabbed a H3 heading plus a bullet point list, it might have grabbed the information from a table, it might have grabbed the information from a paragraph within it, and if I can tell how it's grabbed that feature snippet, I will then try and recreate that, but with a better answer to try and win that featured snippet. Because quite often, if you can win a featured snippet, then you will you will get a lot more traffic. And the good thing about featured snippets is, sometimes I can have an article that is ranking position five, six, seven, and I'll still win that featured snippet. And it means I don't, get, I don't need to try and get to number one or two, because if I've got the featured snippet, I'm getting the majority of the traffic for the searches on uh, Google for that query. Now the next thing to check, which is a game changer, is I check if I've got some internal links linking to the article that I'm updating, and I also check that I'm actually linking to a couple of my own articles and maybe one or two articles that are going to another website. Well, I link some of the authority, or it's maybe shown that that you've done the research. So when Google can see that you've done research for this article because you've linked out to another authority type site. Now, internal linking from your older pages or from, even from new pages, linking to an article that you've updated. Now, that, that's a big game changer for me. When I started putting more concentration into internal links on my site, I actually seen quite a bit of an increase in my traffic. Now, to do this, I used to just do it at, uh, manually, but what I actually use now, I use a plugin called the uh, Link Whisperer. Now, Link Whisperer is an excellent plugin, and what it allows me to do is, I do a, a report, I try and show a screenshot, then it'll show all my pages, and it'll show how many links are linking to it and how many links are going out from the article. So then what I can do is, it will quickly show me, if I've got no links linking to this article that I'm updating, it will show me examples of other articles on my site where I could add a link and it, and it, and it will automatically, just by simply selecting it, it will automatically set up a link from, from other posts to this post that I'm, that I'm updating just with the click of a button saves hours and hours of time and that is a plugin that I do recommend again. I will put a link in the description for it. Now, when I'm updating content, something else I also try and include is, I try and include tables and graphs if I can, things like that. And the reason I do this is, you're adding more context to the, to the actual article. It helps improve time on site, so Google sees that as a good sign. It's a good user experience, but also, it can actually attract uh, internal links that will naturally help your article rank as well. Yeah, if you can put a table in or a graph, quite often people will come, they'll screenshot it or they'll take it, they'll use it on their site and quite often they'll credit it back to you. So that's good for the link building but it also helps user experience. Now finally, once I've done all my updates, I've updated the content, I've added tables, I've checked for internal links, I've improved the spelling and punctuation, I've added, I've added and edited content as needed, really improved the overall article. What you're trying to do is make the article the best article that is available for that search term when someone searches within Google. Now, after you've done all that, some, the, uh, there's one other thing that you do recommend doing. One thing is changing the publish date to a recent date so Google knows that you've updated that. Now, what I will mention here is a lot of people still do change the publish date, but just recently, I've actually stopped updating the publish date and I've started adding 
an updated date. Now I've checked with this and Google has started showing my updated date within, within the Google search results, so it is taking note of it. Now how I do this is I use some PHP cold and I use a plugin called Woody Snippets and what I do is it allows me to add some PHP code into my site and it adds the updated date so it displays it on the actual article so even the readers can read it it's at the top shows them that this this has been recently updated and it also tells Google that this article has been updated now if you do all these improvements and you've updated the article Google knows about it now you can often see results within 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 a few days sometimes it takes a few months but I've literally seen results where I've checked the next day and I've gone from the second page to like number three and four on Google top of the search results like I said sometimes it can take a month or two sometimes it's instant it really just depends but most of the time if you've carefully selected the articles you're going to update and then you've gone through this process really the trick is to update articles that are ranking the bottom of the first page of Google and the second page of Google as well if you can update them articles and they have got potential to get some serious traffic then that's when you're really going to see like literally a 5 to 10x in traffic to them specific pages I hope you've enjoyed this video if you have thanks for watching to the end don't forget to like this this video if you found it useful don't forget to also subscribe to the channel to see more videos just like this don't forget to click that little bell to get notified every time I release a new video thanks for watching